Hey everybody, this is the DEI working group for March 30th. Um, we are going to be facilitating by committee today. So um, at least until uh, uh, Justin comes. <laughs> um, before we, oh, Justin's here. Sorry, Justin. We were just about to cut in on your, your action here. Let me, uh, here's the minutes. We just start dropping some stuff in. Not a big deal. Oh, Zoom doesn't let you, <laughs> it's not going to let you unmute or turn on your camera. <laughs> uh, let me, is it, oh, he left. I was going to say, is there something I can do from my end? But maybe he's, yeah, he's rejoining. I'm going to pause the recording then. Okay. Now. There we go. All right. We started the recording. Happen. Yeah, it said like Zoom, like the host, like the, the 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 option for camera and audio is disabled by the host, and I was like, then what's the point of his like of the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> right, and I didn't disable you. I promise, I didn't do anything. So sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm just pulling stuff up here. I'm a little bit behind today. I didn't get to do a ton of agenda prep, but I see we have some topics in here, so we can yeah. go ahead and use that as the base. How's everyone doing today? Thumbs up morning, afternoon. Some people may be on the first. How many cups of coffee Coffee have everyone had today? Elizabeth's at two, Christy's at two. I'm skipping coffee today, so I'm doing tea. I hope I don't regret it. <laughs> what kind of tea? It's ginger, lemon, and hibiscus. Ooh, that sounds like a nice, nice one. Yeah. You know what? Always good to skip some caffeine here and there. I've been trying to be a little better on that, but. <laughs> And how about you, Matt? Um, one cup, but it was a very large cup. <laughs> the American size. Everything, yes, everything's definitely. bigger. <laughs> well, I am like at one, one coffee and one tea. So I'm like right in the middle. <laughs> um, okay, so since I already was a little bit late, we can go ahead and dive in. Um, so we can go ahead and kick off with the first part, which maybe Christy, you want to drive this one a little bit on the mentorship program notes. Yes. So um, I created this document uh, with best practices, basically for some of the projects that uh, we want to have and that we actually uh, run in our community. Um, what I've done here is that I have listed the project, the timeline, um, the link of the timeline, the uh, most important dates, like the um, organization um, application when it starts, when the application, when the organizations uh, get their accepted emails. And also um, in this document, I have added uh, with some research that, with, with some research that I've done online and some articles that I um, read, I, uh, listed here some responsibilities that the mentors uh, might have, like during the project, the responsibilities that uh, G that uh, GSOC students will have, and also the some um, some procedures like uh, how um, what can we consider in order to see or in order to decide what uh, application is will be accepted and what is something that's really important for us. Um, also, I have listed some health and sustainability mentoring matrix, um, like uh, basically to know if the project has succeeded or not, what are we looking for, uh, what do we aim with this project and so on. Uh, so the first, so the mentor identification, their responsibilities and for, the mentors and the responsibilities for the GSOC. I have actually gotten them from the website of the GSOC and the rest of it, it's uh, due to some researches that I've done and to what I thought that would be good. So this document is completely open for any suggestion, as suggestions that you'll have, feedback, 
And once I collect all this, I can go back and put it in order or like do the adjustments. Yeah, I think, I don't know if anyone has a specific question they want to flag right away, but maybe we could just spend just like a metric, just spend 10 minutes going through the doc and leaving some edits and, and notes. Um, be before we do that, I just have a quick question. Um, how do we feel about, uh, so we're right now we're in the period before the mentor, the uh, mentees are chosen. And like this, this part of the process feels very um, kind of like a free for all in my mind, <laughs> um, specifically with regard to um, getting people onboarded onto chaos. Like we keep, I feel like we keep sending the same kind of information out. I don't know if it's helpful for people. And, and quite honestly, like for outreachy, we have been approved for one student. And I think we have, if I look here now, we have in the outreachy channel, we have 76 people in there. So we have just had this huge influx of interested people. And I'm not sure, like, does that belong in a doc like this? Or is this doc supposed to just take us from, okay, like, um, we've, we've basically decided who we're going with and how we move forward. Like, what are you, what's your vision around this, Christy? I was thinking for this document to serve more as a guideline, uh, maybe to help more the, like to help more us in terms of the mentors, the organization, okay. and maybe we can have a, um, a specific area also for the students or for the applicants that are uh, joining us. So, but maybe that's a good point, yours as well. We can, if, uh, if that's okay for everybody, we can also include like what can be the best way that we can, um, that we can approach this, the newcomers in our community and um, things like that. So we can definitely broaden the document. Okay. I, in, the, in the first part at the mentorship program, I have just listed the main programs, but I have not filled them out with the information because I thought let's discuss it first and then we can edit it. And, and some of this might come with uh, as our experience with these mentorship programs go, like um, I did not realize, um, I know Chaos has done outreachy in the past, but I was not around. By the time I joined Chaos, that student was already onboarded and working. Um, I did not realize we were gonna get this huge wave <clears throat> of people interested. And so um, I, I kind of wish we could have prepared a little better for that and had some like better support structures um, because at the same time, then Sean was out of the country and he's basically the main point person. So it, that's kind of not been a great experience <laughs> for him and for, for you know, for our, our applicants, like they're trying to get answers on things and like, he's the only one that knows. So um, just kind of being a little more proactive, I think for the next time around. Um, and then like She Codes Africa is a, a new program for us. So we don't really know what to experience there, but um, maybe this doc can kind of just be a, hey, feedback for next time, make sure we have, you know, people available and around that can answer technical questions, etc. So, okay, cool. Thanks, Christy. Welcome. Yeah, and maybe to build on that, thinking about how this might translate internally. So just thinking like where this might live, since it's not really in the purview of like a metric per se, although there might be some really good metric ideas that we could build from this. Um, I'm thinking this is something that fits in that context of the handbook conversation, because I see a lot of this really being more like internal focused documentation to help us be organized and unified on like how we approach things and like what are the goals and trying to be clear on like how these processes work even internally. Um, so I see that probably fitting into the handbook discussion. And I know there's some, we talked about it before, there's a lot of like kind of tricky pieces with the handbook right now. Um, so I don't know if it's something that we'd want to like, go ahead and edit, work on editing this document with the assumption that we'd integrate it as a new set of content into the handbook if we want to like combine this into the website redesign is something that we like, or the knowledge base project that's happening, I guess, with Outreachy this summer, maybe it could go with this. Um, I'm just trying to think like, so I guess that's probably where this work would be translated to in terms of where we take it once we go through it and workshop it for a bit. It would probably be like either to the handbook or it's its future home, the knowledge base, I guess, is my, my thinking, right? 
Yeah, I would, I would plus a hundred that. I think it definitely needs to be documented and in a, in a place where that's easily accessible for anybody. So that, you know, a prospective applicant can also see, oh, hey, it looks like these people kind of have it together. I mean, <laughs> that's debatable, but you know, like it, it, at least we're all on the same page of like, what are, what are our expectations? What are the responsibilities? So I 100% agree. And um, to that point, this is off tangent just a little bit, but I feel like this is, I don't know, maybe the third or fourth doc that we've been like, oh yeah, we'll add that to the knowledge base when it's ready. And now I feel like I'm losing these docs. So do we need to create a, like a meta list of these kind of pieces of information that will eventually make it into the community handbook? Like where, where can we make sure that this doesn't get lost, I guess is my question in this like weird uh, transition period between old community handbook and new knowledge base. I know this is this would be a lot of work, but I kind of have this idea about a uh, a start here, some kind of documentation home for people that are prospective applicants, so that those questions can be answered for them, starting out. And then we have this internal documentation as well to support people who are starting to become a mentor for this kind of program. Uh, I, I'd really like to see a start here, but I'm not sure where to start with the start here documentation. Yeah, I think just, we can probably try to integrate this and get real time feedback during the process with the current team, but maybe we can use like a since I'd see this is more of kind of a DEI topic, we could track this in the DEI GitHub and like make a checklist of content that we want to advocate for or write into the handbook and track it there. Or maybe we should do that in the community repo i'm not sure what would make more sense i mean i see this i see this one as dei but i'm not sure if we want to try to group those with other working groups or if there's other requests out there i think that's a really great point and i think maybe that central place in the community handbook would ensure that it's seen and not lost across the working groups so um yeah, I agree with that. I like that idea. I don't know what the rest of you all think, but just having like even an issue where we can just like drop our notes or drop our thoughts in of as these docs pop up that we want to add to the knowledge base. Um, I think that would be a good place for it. Then what we could do is then I can take an action to open an issue on the chaos community. Uh, repo for tracking, tracking basically all things knowledge base that we want to make sure we we capture. Um, and then maybe we can spend 10 minutes just with that context of like kind of how we want to frame this or where this might live. We could go 10 minutes through this and just do like a first pass on comments and and leave any feedback or notes in the doc. Yes. Cool. So let's go ahead and do that then. I don't know if we want to do want to pause the recording for like 10 minutes. Sure. Let me do that. Chat a little bit more uh, uh, mentorship, best practices, anything as a group, or do we want to go ahead and shift over to the next item around data use and ethics statement? Maybe we can try to leave this uh, mentorship um, document probably for the next time as well if uh, Matt and Sean might join just for the document to be more completed or have some other things and then we can discuss everything at the same time once everyone has put it in there. Yeah, we, and we might have some more details on the, the knowledge base piece too, because I think the selection period for is GSOC wrapping up now or I no. think April 19th is the time that they have to indicate their interest. And then I think we have a little bit of time after that to actually pick some of the people that we want to work with. So um yeah, we have a little bit of time. Okay, so it's about the same as outreachy too then. Okay, well, we can follow up next time too. Also, when we have some other folks who are, since we're, we're spread pretty thin on uh, from from Spain, I think. 
Um, so cool, we can go ahead and, and jump on to the next one. And I'll also just to fly, I'll open the, the GitHub issue just so we can start tracking this kind of content for the, the knowledge base. So the next one, I'm not sure who added this one, is for the data use and ethics statement. Uh, it says for folks to see. I don't know if we want to anyone add this one to the agenda for today. I did not add it, but I can speak to it a little bit somewhat. Um, let me just, I'll share so we can kind of just show everybody what that is. Um, so there have been a, a group of folks, oops, working on this. Oh, um, there we go. A group of folks working on this um, to provide guidance for those who are trying to use and implement our metrics to make sure that they're mindful of the way that they're collecting, storing, using that data, especially when it, it kind of overlaps with personally identifiable information or PII. But we are gonna add this statement to every single metric we have just to bring it top of mind. So anybody who's reading this metric, any atomic metric regardless, um, we just want them to be aware of the implications and the ethics around. So um, this document talks about um, like some things to consider, some, you know, how we handle information, what the sensitivity levels are. Um, and then we link to some guidance um, on, you know, different countries, et cetera. Um, these links seem to not, hmm, interesting. I have to look at, at that. We might have lost that in translation from um, a uh, Google Doc to this, because I don't think I can click on any of these. Um, but anyway, so that's what this document is. And we just want to make sure that everybody knows that we have this document now and that it's um, out there and ready to go. Yeah, these links seem fine. For some reason, these other links did not come through. So I'll um, actually add an action item for myself to double check those links. So I guess going forward, is there like a common text blurb that we should put into all metrics that link out to the, the data use statement? Yeah, it's in the templates metric uh, or metric. Yeah, metric template. <laughs> it's in the metric template um, with another kind of standard blurb about like why they should care and why they should pay attention to this. And we can, um, wait, let me do this because I can't do more than one thing at one time because I'm limited in that capacity. Uh, let me just pull up a metric here um, so you can read that. I don't know if it's been, I think it's been added to some of the newer ones. So part of our task is to go back and add that blurb to all the old metrics too. Um, so let's look at occasional contributors. This should be in here, right here it is. So it's, it goes under the implementation section. And then we'll link that. That's gonna be part of the release process is to add a link right here to that document. Makes sense. I remember that was a conversation that's I think been going for like probably like a month or two now, right? Longer, yeah. It's been going on for quite a while, and um, because it was a little bit confusing because Chaos also has um, a, a data use statement that we we follow that is like how we use our data in our community, but we also then kind of from that branched out and said, you know, we should really um, it because we're you know, offering advice on how people can measure this stuff, we should also offer advice and guidance on what they should be doing with this data, just to be re as responsible as we can, you know, and to help people make good choices and not, yeah, not get themselves in trouble or, you know, break some laws, <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> and, you know, because we, we were also thinking like a lot of the people who are using our, our metrics are um, like open source maintainers and they're not necessarily lawyers or don't have that, um, that skill set or that knowledge about like things that they should be mindful of. So, yeah. And I'm sure that that, that um, document will grow as, you know, as we go on and people contribute to it, but this is definitely a good first, first pass. So. Mm 
Looks good. So I guess as we are doing any uh, metric updates on our end too, we can just be mindful of that Making little sure piece. That yeah, for sure. And yeah, and also, um, yeah. Uh, I think also just as one, one quick final, final thing, um, we don't, uh, we don't really, like we put it in every metric, but we don't, I don't think identify those that do definitely touch on PII, like some do in the DEI working group. So I don't know how we feel about that. Like we just kind of leave that blanket statement in every metric, but we're not like, hey, this is one, this is the one that has PII in it potentially. Like when we're um, you know, doing a survey on psychological safety, for instance, like, so I'm not sure how that fits into it, um, but yeah. Yeah, it might still be other ways to think about capturing that data, but I at least feel like this will be a, a good, good first step in that direction. So any other feedback or comments on the, the ethics statement? If not, then we can jump to the final and last topic for today, which to me looks like more business as usual. So, or more, more on metric side of things. So I see event accessibility and project demographics. Yeah, share. I added this um, only because this is the last week to review any comments or feedback we've gotten from the public on these. So thought maybe we could just look through and see if we have to make any changes to these metrics. Um, Okay, so these are in the final the final step. Did we and we went through the Google Doc review with these, and they have translations. Yeah, yeah. This is just like the final. So we like open up all the metrics for thirty days prior to our release, just in case you know it's like a last call for comments. If anybody has any additional feedback from the community, um, and sometimes like people from different working groups will jump back and forth and look at others metrics that they haven't seen before, um, and it looks like on this one. Um, Matt is taking care of that. So it doesn't look like we have any other additional comments. So, yeah. And when was the, is there a calendar date set for the next release already? Uh, no, um, the, just the month of March is the 30 day period, 31 day period. Um, and then, cause we usually do a release in April and October. And so in April, we'll give it like a, a week or so to kind of make up, you know, wrap up any loose ends, add that link, for instance, do any final things. And then, um, Kevin and the metrics release team will, um, do their automated process of pulling all the documents into that PDF and putting them all on the website as, as released. So they will go from um, like the, uh, where is that? Uh, so right now these have tags that say under review. So those tags will go away and this issue will go away and they'll just all look like released metrics, if that makes sense. So this one looks like it's pretty well ready to go. We added that to the website. Everybody knows about it. I think it's, I don't know about that. We'll check that, but yeah. Do we wanna look at the other one? Yeah. I'm can take a quick peek, I think. So I think we talked about these probably like in February too, right? Was when we did most of the review or, or January? Yeah, yeah. So this is just a final, like again, a final like last call for anybody who had reviewed this metric that wasn't involved in those conversations maybe at the beginning. And that's just kind of coming in with fresh eyes and we don't have any extra on this one. So this one's also good to go. And also just a point of note, sorry, um, that event accessibility metric will also be added to the DEI event badging 
program as well. So um, we are, will be asking questions about event accessibility on applicants as soon as this release it gets released, and then we'll make the changes to the DEI badging. So it will be a little harder for people, you know, to get that gold badge because we're going to be asking them quite a lot. And in fact, this is actually going to be a whole new section we're adding to the DEI badging. So yeah, we're really going to make them work for it <laughs> a little bit more because there's quite a lot in this uh, metric that we're going to ask them about. So yeah, just a point of reference. That's a really cool one to see integrated into the, the badging program. And I guess now that, if I remember right, it covers kind of virtual and in-person, right? Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's weird to see all these in-person things starting up again, but you know, I guess we'll probably start seeing more of those coming into the badging program too, if we haven't already. Yeah, yeah, we have been getting um, quite a few that are in-person or that have a hybrid, you know, that have both components. So yeah, it's interesting to see them come back. Cool. I don't see any other major comments or feedback on the issues. And that brings us to the end of the agenda today. So we still have seven minutes left on the clock. I don't know if anyone has anything they'd like to bring up or, or topics they'd like to bring up for the group, or if we want to wrap up a little bit early today. Going once. Going twice. And sold. So we can go ahead and wrap up here. But do we have, want to pick a chair for next week's meeting for next Wednesday? Any volunteers? I've got an ongoing conflict with this time frame, which is why I'm late. So I will not take it. No worries. can do it if no one else we can do it by it. committee. We can do it, yeah, by or we committee. Can do it by committee. Yeah. So my Google Doc tab is slow, but I'll update the sheet and make that note in there. Thanks everyone for coming by today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday mornings, afternoon, or, or your evening. We'll catch up next time. Thanks, Justin. Take care, all. Justin. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye, all.